We are back with Clostridium part three. And this one we can write more Clostridium. Um, just to go back to where I started, this was the first part of the notes. Okay, so I started out with Clostridium and gave you some general characteristics and compared tetanus with botulism. So now on this page, we are going to look at two more um, dangerous diseases that can be caused by Clostridium. The um, Probably one of the most famous and, oh, just so intractable is Clostridium difficile. Now just like all the uh, diseases and organisms we're talking about on this page, it is a gram positive rod endospore former. And those little endospores are why it is so tricky to treat um, Clostridium because it just keeps coming back. If antibiotics are given to treat this, then the bacteria might die, but it forms endospores before it dies. And then as soon as the antibiotics are gone, any little endospores that were able to remain in the intestinal lining can germinate and the infection can come back. It is really infuriating to treat. So um, let's go ahead and highlight this in yellow. And um, you guys are going to get to listen to my seven-year-old practice his piano, I guess, today. Okay, so let's go ahead and do um, orange for the um, simple columnar epithelial cells of the intestine. So I've put down here simple columnar epithelium of the intestinal mucosa. And what happens is... Um, that the clostridium is making toxins. So uh, it's gram positive, so I'm gonna color it purple. Here are the little gram positive rods. So the gram positive clostridium, so that's these guys right here, they secrete this toxin that is a cytotoxin and an enterotoxin, and so it is going to hurt these cells in the intestinal lining. Um, here are, these are a couple of, a couple more intestinal cells, and yes, they are not doing well. Look how sick they look. Okay, so what happens is these cells are damaged by the enterotoxins, And they start losing water as they become damaged. It's one of the effects of the toxin. And of course that leads to diarrhea. But then what happens is that some of the cells actually, um, as they die, they start to kind of slough off the intestinal wall and what that does is it attracts white blood cells which of course um, as we've been learning about the immune system you know that they are associated with inflammation so you get these white blood cells and these dying or sick um, or dead cells um, and the bacteria all together and you can actually get get what's known as like a pseudomembrane. Um, it's, it's like this uh, plaque of infection, almost like a pus pocket on the intestinal wall. So lots and lots of diarrhea. But now, let me tell you, the thing that causes this is antibiotics. There are occasionally cases where someone just gets it out of the blue but most of the time it's antibiotic associated. What that means is if someone is prescribed antibiotics, if they have to take those antibiotics, they are increasing their risk for C. diff. There are certain antibiotics that are more strongly associated with causing C. diff than others, but any antibiotic by nature of how they work could do it because antibiotics kill all the bacteria that they come across in the intestine um, a lot of our friendly flora are damaged by them, 
And so when the friendly flora is gone, then C. diff is allowed to thrive. So it's uh, hospital associated, specifically antibiotic associated. Um, if someone is uh, diagnosed with C. diff, then they are given this um, antibiotic, metronidazole, I think is how it's said. Um, and that's the first one that they're given, usually. Uh, if, if it comes back, which it does, golly, I think in sometimes as many as 50% um, of the cases uh, are repeated. Um, if you get it for the first time, you might have a 20% chance of it coming back, but it can, it can be hard to eradicate. Um, so if metronidazole doesn't work, then um, they may um, prescribe vancomycin. Um, one exciting thing, because isn't, do you see the irony here? Antibiotics caused it, and then they use antibiotics to try and get rid of it. And as you, you might remember, I mentioned earlier with um, endospores, what can happen is that let's say most of the clostridium is, is um, inhibited and um, there aren't very many of the actual cells left. Well, then as they're like, whoa, we're under attack, we're under attack, they all start making endospores, and then their endospores will be left in the folds of the intestine. And as soon as the antibiotic course is over, then the infection can actually return, the endospores germinate. So for that reason, um, sometimes a pulsing antibiotic treatment is given, which is the opposite of everything you've ever heard about antibiotics. And what happens is they will treat with the metronidazole and then they will wait a week and then they will treat again. So in that week, the endospores may have um, germinated and then they go at it again. And then they might have to do that three or four times. And ironically, when that's considered bad for most antibiotic treatments, it's sometimes the best way to go after C. diff in those really bad cases. Um, and then another exciting uh, thing they can do is that sometimes it is cured with a fecal transplant. People used to laugh at these, but they are becoming really well known in the medical community. There's clinical trials in the US, and basically, if someone can show and demonstrate with testing that they have healthy fecal matter, uh, that has lots and lots of variety of normal flora, then they can donate their um, stool and that stool can be used to transplant into someone that has chronic C. diff and it works. It, some of the clinical trials I've seen, it's like 90% effective, which is absolutely amazing. It goes to show that C. diff is truly a disease of floral imbalance. Uh, another thing I ran across when I have been studying this is that Saccharomyces boulardii, this is a yeast, has been used in some clinical trials to inhibit C. diff. It seems to be um, somewhat effective uh, a treatment to prevent it coming back again. Um, be, and what they think is that the yeast may um, give off chemicals that inhibit the C. diff. So I think for people that are at higher risk but otherwise healthy, this might be something worth talking to their doctor about as a possibility. Then the last thing I wanted to say about um, C. diff, we have to turn our page, or, page like this is um, a complication of even if somebody gets better from C. diff um, is that there's a strong association with autoimmune arthritis that occurs after a C. diff infection. It's called post C. diff.
And what they think happens with this is that antibodies to the clostridium actually start attacking our own joints, sort of like rheumatic fever. but it ends up hurting us. Okay, sorry that that was so messy. I'm gonna stop there and then in the next segment, I'm going to talk about gangrene and how that can also be caused by clostridium.